Hiya guys and thanks for stopping by to watch this video. Before we get into the unboxing, just a forward, um, I did have a missed pack in this live unboxing and I, I wondered, now, do I actually put this up as a video, so on and so forth, and I thought yes. Um, and the reason being is that I contacted Mantic's customer support about this missed pack three minutes ago and I have just had a response from Elvis already. Okay, three minutes and they're already sorting it, yeah? Brilliant customer service. This is the reason why I'm so behind Mantic in the games, and I hope you enjoy this video. Ahoy! It's time, finally, for a Twilight Kin starter set unboxing. So, it's finally arrived just now. I've uh, eagerly took the cellophane off, but let's have a look at what these Pirates of the High Seas are all about. And with all the unboxings, we do it live. You can hear the miniature creators. Hold a breath. <laughs> Lovely bags of Armada models, faces, upgrades. There we go. Okay, let's have a look at the miniatures. I'm always a, I'm a miniatures guy. <laughs> I always start with the models. Loads of resin. Uh, let's tip them all out and then I'll sort them out. So the detail that we saw in the expansion fleet, the booster fleet, was lovely. So I'm guessing it's going to be the same. Um, I'd be amazed if it isn't. So there we go. So that's all the parts. And uh, yeah, so unfortunately, it looks like I've actually had a complete mispack. Um, as I put all the bits out, this is actually what looks like a expansion fleet, a booster fleet. So yeah, interesting, because there's definitely none of them in the starter box. Um, yeah. Oh well, these things happen, don't they? So I'll get on to Mantic service about that. However, let's see if the cards are correct. Okay, so the the cards for the fleet are in here. So let's let's take a look at those. Um, so Twilight King rules shroud enemy ship shooting at ships from this fleet suffer an additional minus one modifier to hit if the shooting ship is more than eight inches away from its target. This only affects weapons fired from weapon positions. Doesn't affect special weapon spells, standard upgrades, or magical upgrades. That's pretty good, isn't it? Additional minus one to hit makes a massive difference. Vengeance Incarnate. Twilight Kinships may take the Barded Harpoon upgrade without this taking up a normal upgrade slot. Ooh, this must be paid for normally. So, we've got Ensnare. While within six inches of the ship, friendly ships receive plus two modifier to their skill test when attempting a grapple. This ship may not confer the benefit on itself, however. Okay, so Ensnare then... That works well with the previous box we've seen, so it basically, those ships can boost these ships. Pretty cool. Uh, decimate is make a skill test for this ship when it is involved in a boarding action before any dice rolled. If the test is passed, one enemy ship, the ship is grappled with, chosen by the Twilight King player, is at minus two crew strength to a minimum of one for this boarding action. Apply this before any factors such as crippled. Okay, that's pretty cool. Banshee's Whale, when grappled with this ship, enemy ships suffer a minus one to hit modifier on any boarding attack rolls they make. And we have Attrition. Friendly ships add one damage to any normal shooting attack from a weapon position for each friendly ship with this rule within six. And the attack must cause at least one damage itself to do this. Extra damage is not added to results on the critical hit table. Add extra damage after any multiplication such as point blank and raking flight fire. Okay, and then obviously RAM, we've got RAM in there as well. Now, if I have a look at the cards, so I got some of the cards were incorrect. So we've seen the Impaler already, which has RAM 1. This was in the other box. Um, the Banshee is quite an interesting ship. It's a support ship, and it has that Banshee's Whale rule, and two close either side. Movement of 5, 14 nerve, 18 structure points, and 2 crew strength. Quite interesting. I can't show you a butcher because, unfortunately, I haven't got the card. <laughs> I did, however, get a soul bane, which I'm honestly unsure as to what this is. Um, I'm guessing it's something to do with the butcher. I'm not sure. It's got to be, hasn't it? I mean, it's a main battleship at 60 points. Um, four head either side, closely front and rear. Uh, movement of four, 56 nerve, 70 structure points, and six crew strength. But I'm unsure as to which model that is, so it's one of the uh, unfortunate effects of a mispack, isn't it? So we also get the Twilight and Fleet upgrades in there. 
Um, the unique Twilight can fleet, as we'd expect. Uh, Blade Dances. The ship can reroll any natural ones and twos when rolling to attack in boarding actions. That's pretty good for three points. That's very good for three points. Very good for players like me that roll ones and twos. <laughs> Uh, the Bardied Harpoons, this is a thing that doesn't take an upgrade slot. One use only, this ship may attempt to grapple regardless of the target ship's speed. The enemy ship will be grappled on a skill test level of a four or more regardless of any modifiers. A Void Cage is a magical upgrade. During the boarding action phase of this ship's activation, if it is not grappled, it may attempt to summon Reapers onto the enemy ship within six. Roll a d6 on a four or more, the summoning is successful. Make a boarding action attack on the target with a crew strength of three, hitting on fives or more. The inflicted and the inflict damage is normal. The enemy ships don't get to roll, so it automatically loses the boarding action if the damage is caused. Okay. This attack cannot benefit from any other bonuses granted by upgrades present on the ship. If you if the D6 roll to summon is one, resolve the attack against the ship itself. That's cool. So you could give them a void cage and do a three crew strength attack with no come back on you at distance. However, if you roll a one, it will attack your own ship. That's quite interesting for three points. Quite interesting. Double edge, maybe. And what have we got here? Captain upgrades. Lease the soulless. While they are within four inches of the ship, any nerve test made by enemy ships will suffer an additional minus one modifier. Fair play. Vice Admiral Phobius Darkheart. Once per activation, we're making a shooting attack from a weapons position that has normal weapons on it. On this ship, the player can instead choose to fire a single special attack as follows. Range 14 inch, 1d10, hits on an unmodified 5 or more. If the attack hits, no damage is caused, but the enemy ship speed is set to steady and it cannot voluntarily change speed in its next activation. Place a marker as a reminder. This will not affect the ships that are surrendered or grounded, however. Okay. That's actually really powerful. So he can basically prevent a ship from being as manoeuvrable while the rest of your fleet come in and, and pick it a bit. The, the coins are like sharks going around the prey, aren't they? And interestingly, because of Caesar Flame, we now have magic in here. So we have the Twilight Can spell book. Um, so we have their selection there and their own magic card, Veil of Shadows. Okay, cast on a 6 plus at power level 3. Targets a casting ship. Place a marker on the ship and every friendly enemy, uh, or every friendly ship within 8 as a reminder. During this turn, enemy ship shooting at the ship with a marker on it suffered an additional minus 1 to hit. This only affects normal weapons fired from weapon positions. It doesn't affect any special rules or items that make shooting attacks. Wow. So he can, you can cast Veil of Shadows... For minus one to hit, you've got a natural minus one with shroud. Anything over eight inch against that ship once that spells off at minus two to hit. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you can't hit me if you can't hit them, can you? <laughs> That's the be all end all. So, yeah, interesting. I hope this adds a bit of um, bit of sort of context to the previous unboxing. A bit disappointed, obviously. I got a mispack. These things happen, guys. Mantix customer service is great, and I'll um, I'll get onto them and get them to. I just want my butcher. <laughs> but anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Wherever you are in the world, stay safe, stay well, and happy hobbying.